So here we are, Carp Dream Lakes in Hungary. We've just had a drive over from Croatia and uh, we've got a fantastic looking lake in front of us. The whole lake is flat out busy. There's not a swim going apart from our two. So we're gonna have to make the best of what we've got. No privileges, no advantages. Find out what's in front of us, go from there. It's like you say, Joe, we've got no privileges. We're gonna come here, see what's in here. They could be 40, 50, 60 pounders. We don't know, we just know there's carp in here. I'm quite excited about having this blank canvas and seeing what is actually in here. What about you, Dan? I'm really excited and intrigued to get started, as I know the other lads are. It'd be nice to get the marker rod out there, try and see what topography, sort of areas we've got in front of the two swims. We don't know about any sort of stamp of fish. We don't know about nuisance fish, crayfish, catfish. So it's completely blank canvas for all of us. But for me, for one, I can't wait to get started. First impressions of Carp Dream Lakes, at my first glance, what a beautiful place. Trees all the way down the margins, long Norfolk reeds, it really is gorgeous. You come down the gravel track, the gate opens, you're greeted by a really mature lake, it's really picturesque. Loads of Norfolk reeds, overhanging willow trees, everything that screams carp. We've got pegs one and two, which gives us all a little bit of space. There's a hell of a lot of uh, small fish in the margins, which is going to change up our baiting approach, I think, because the crushed boily approach, the pellet approach, I think they're just going to get hammered, especially if you're fishing close in. So hopefully there'll be a bit of deep water out there because I haven't got a clue what it is. I mean, it could be six foot, it could be 60 foot. We have no idea about the lake, we have no idea about the stock, but we're in Hungary, so there's normally a load of big fish, especially 25 kilo pluses out here. They seem to be in every bit of water. So for me, all I want to do is catch one of those. Who knows what's in here? There's definitely going to be some 25 kilo fish in here, maybe a lot bigger. That's what we're going to find out this week. Sometimes it's lovely just to turn up, bit of a blank canvas and not know what's going to go on. But at first glance, I'm really liking this place. I don't want to go in with any preconceived ideas, thinking that I'm going to fish one rig and all three rods because the situation out there I'm faced with might be different. So yeah, I'm going to get up to the swim, put the marker rod out, have a run around with a bait boat, see what's out in front of me, and then we'll go from there. You can't be robbed of something when you just blatantly cheat, Dave. That won't cheat, that's no, it a is. Pass Usually at starting a competition, you go one, two, three, go. We said, right lads, ready? And he was like, gone. You and you was you nose deep like, in the gun. You it, it, a full start. <laughs> no, you didn't full start, you just proper cheated. There was and then, no... And then I won the jet skiing, but I had a two second penalty. Like Overall, Jay was the winner this one. I won, simple. You, like, listen, bronze medalist. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at Suzaki, don't matter if you come last. No, that's true, yeah. true Dan. <laughs> well anyway, we're off the back of that, so we've now got to do swim choice and we've got the choice of two swims, um, pretty much a double and a single. Um, I don't think I can do a single week again. Um, Suzaki last week broke me, it was a bit of a nightmare in there, so I think I'm going to go in this swim. So this is peg two. This swim, left or right, Jay? Whoever comes in here, I'll, I'll, I'll flip the coin with heads left, tails right, and then no, whatever good. that goes, that goes, yeah? So no, that's fair. Whoever so wants to come in here. I'm going to go up there in swim number one and leave you two pair of merciless guys to flip the coin and see what sides go. But to be fair, I don't think we've got a bad swim here. There's been fish showing all over the whole lake. Yeah. On the recce, it wouldn't have mattered where we sort of end up, but I'm quite looking forward to fishing with you. Let's have a go. Best of luck, Davey. Oh, Cheers. Alright, let's do it. My usual approach when I arrive at any new venue, no matter where it is in the world, I take a bait that I've got full confidence in. And for this venue, Carp Dream Lakes, I've took the link, 
The Link itself is a fish meal bait with a little twist of fruit. I absolutely love the stuff and so do the carp. The mixture that I've put together, I've got a mix of 18 mil a hole, I've got chopped 18s, I've done some crumb boilies, probably 10 kilo of crumb, and mixed a whole lot together in this big container, but what I've also added is lots of liquid attractors. This is to try and get fish in the water columns, down to the hook bait, in and around the baited area, to try and get a quick bite. The liquids that I've used, I've used the activator, which is usually rolled into the base mix, but for me, it's really, really strong, high in flavor, and I like to coat all the baits with it. I've also added the Smart Liquid Fish version. What that is gonna give off, is gonna give off lots of fats, lots of acids, pulling fish from the water columns down into the baited area. This is what I'm confident in. I like to add a fleck of color. I've also added in this big mix probably 15 kilo of link here. There's two kilo of salty squid shelf life high impact boilies. These are all washed out pink. The reason why I do that, it gives me a variety of hook bait options. I can put on a pink, I can put on a match the hatch. So yeah, that's my starting approach. We'll see through the course of the week if it's doing the business. If not, I can change it up slightly. I can add some different ingredients, maybe some particle, crushed tigers. This will be the starting approach. Let's see how it goes. As you can see, I've probably just done about 20 kilo of bait there. Um, what I did, I started off crushing five kilo of 18 millers. I don't bother crushing 10s or 15s, I think it's a bit of a waste. So I go for the biggest boilers I can get and I crush them down. Now I did five kilo of that and I put that in the bucket first. What I then did was add some 10 millers, some 15 millers and 18 millers, five kilo of each. Now I didn't mix it up at that point. So what I then did was add a load of liquids. Now the reason I did that was the liquids will coat the boilies perfectly and they'll literally be absolutely soaked. If I did it first, if I put the liquids in with the crushed, the crushed absorbs the liquids really, really quick and it makes big clumps. So what I've actually done is coated all the boilies first, so they've all got a nice glaze over it, and then when I mix it up, the crushed bait basically sticks to the boilies. That gives each and every one a little coating of crushed bait as it goes through the water. I'm not spodding it out today. Today, these are going out in a bait boat. So for me, the perfect mix, loads of scent, loads of smell, loads of 18 mils, 10 mil, 15 mils, and a little bit of a crushed in there just to keep them grubbing about. I've opted to go for the 18 pound brown. It's really gonna suit the environment. The water's quite brown here. Nice strong line, super tough, and it casts lovely as well. So I'm gonna strip the 300 meters of orbit off and simply load the 18 pound brown on. So the line I'm pulling off here is the 10 pound orbit. And with the snags opposite me, I want something that's a little bit more robust and tough. And that's gonna be the 18 pound brown. That's gonna give me lots of pulling power it's going to be super abrasive for any snags that it's going to touch and things like that. And that's what I'm going to want, fishing across against trees that are laying in water and things like that. 11 foot of water on a gravel shelf over there, dropping down to about 15 foot. So it's a lovely area. And to get these rods ready, and hopefully I can borrow a rowing boat. It's going to save me a lot of to and fro in with a bait boat and battery power. And I can go over there and bait up. Plenty of fish showing in my swim. Really excited to get the rods out. There's a lot of fish activity. Sort of let them give themselves away. There you go. And then we'll come and put the rods out. New venue. So what I'm going to do, I've taken off the double tapered main line because I'm not having to cast long ranges. We're actually allowed to use a boat here. I've got a 15 pound green mono in soak. There's 1,200 meters on there. I'm going to do three of my Shimano big pits. Really simple. I've taken one off. I've just tied a really quick overhand knot, tied it down onto the base of the spool. I've got a tail with me just to keep the line under ten tension, no friction going through my skin. I want to keep the line quite tight when winding it on and it's just a case of put a few winds on, making sure there's no line twist and then proceed and fill it up to the lip of the spool. The reason why I'm using the 15 pound green, it's really strong, really abrasion resistant. When I'm using a bait boat with a line control arm, it's not susceptible to twisting. And yeah, it ticks all the boxes for me. It's probably my go-to line when I'm fishing big open waters like this using a bait boat. I could have up to the 18 pound or the 20 pound fluoro. They both sink great. And they're also great for using at range with a bait boat. But this is my personal choice and this is what I've decided to spool up with for this venue. Okay, so now I've spooled up. I'm gonna attach my leader. Similar to what I always do, I love a helicopter rig, so I've got a helicopter set up, one of our quick change swivels on our 50 pound camouflage leadless leader. 
and I attach this using a Palomar knot. I've spliced the top so I've got a nice little neat loop at the top. I'm just going to tie a Palomar knot which is a very simple knot. You simply double it up so that you've got a loop on your swivel, the top of your splice or whatever you're tying it on. It's doubled over. You tie an overhand knot like so and then you put your swivel or your rig straight through the loop. Bit of spit, pull that up and this knot is completely doubled all the way so it's got two lots of line going through which makes it an extremely strong knot. Pull it nice and tight, take your scissors and snip it off nice and short. There you go and that's that rod ready to go. You just need to now put a rig on it. I've got my 15 pound mono which I just changed over to, I've just spooled up with that. Running down from the mono, I've got probably two foot of 50 pound lead free leader. I'm fishing this helicopter style, so the second I get a take, the rig will run up, hit the bead, but if it does run the other way, it eject the lead every time to pull the fish into the upper layers, so I'm in full direct contact with the fish. And then the rig itself, it's a slip D rotator, something I've got maximum confidence in. The previous venue, I landed a new personal best, so why would I want to change? The Slip D Rotator Rig is my go-to pop-up presentation. There's a couple of reasons why. Basically incorporates all the good factors from the Slip D Rig and the Invogue Ronnie Rig. Basically, it offers a low-line pop-up presentation, as would the Ronnie, but having the soft, uncoated D on the back of the shank of the hook, which I've attached the mini hook ring swivel, which I would attach the bait to via the floss, it gives full freedom of movement. And I believe when the carp pick up, sucks, and try and eject, they find it really difficult. It pulls the hook bait down, which will in turn pull the hook bait deeper into the bottom lip, and the hook holds on this rig are phenomenal. The components and how I tie it, I'll run you through it now. So I'm fishing this helicopter style. I've got a size 11 heli swivel. Coming down from there, I've got a long anti-tangle sleeve just to help kick it away from the lead on the cast. I've got seven or eight inches there of the semi-stiff rock bottom. The reason why I'm using the semi-stiff, again, it helps with anti-tangle properties. It kicks it away from the lead nicely. This is a tungsten hook link, so it sinks like an absolute stone. I have a small piece of putty up this end. Basically, that's doing two things. It's covering up the overhand loop knot, which I've secured down the bottom, so the rotator rig has full movement and a bit of freedom. But it's also it's counterbalancing the weight of the pop-up, so it slowly sink effortlessly down to the bottom, and it sit proud as punch over any terrain. Then you come down to the hook arrangement itself. Really couldn't be any simpler. I have a small section of 25 pound soft coated. I've actually used a stripper tool, strip off all the coating. I use the soft coated inner because I believe it's more supple and it's got really nice freedom of movement. I could have used a soft braid, but for me, it's all about confidence and I find this works absolutely perfectly. I have a small piece of 2.4mm shrink tube. I pass the two tag ends of the soft uncoated section through the shrink tube. I leave them out probably two or three mil. Then I attach my rotator swivel through the eye of the hook, as you would the Ronnie rig. Then it's really quite simple. You can either use a lighter, keeping your fingers out of the way so you don't burn the fingers or burn the soft coated section, or you can steam it in a kettle. Once you've steamed it, you're left with two really short tag ends. I just blob them against the barrel, and you really can pull that as hard as you want and manipulate the D, and it really won't move anywhere. This rig has now accounted for me to fish to 78 pound. And it's something I've got mega confidence in and it's something I'm gonna start the session with here. Well, there you go. It's not been out long and we've got the first one. 33 and a half pound of Hungarian mirror. What a lovely way to start. This one certainly likes his link boilies. I am officially off the mark. No more blanking for me. Bring on, to be honest, bring on your little brother. You're gonna be bigger than this. I'd like to say bring on your nan or granddad, but if we're going up in age scale, just bring on your little brother. <laughs> what a clunker. 
When you go away, it's great to find out what's in front of you. You can do that in many ways. You can use a marker rod and plumb from the bank. You can use a large boat and a prodding stick and an echo sounder from a large boat. What I'm doing here, I've got a bait boat out there and it's transferring the information via the rain marine straight back to my app on my tablet. This has given me full topography of the lake bed and the situation that I'm going to be faced with out there. But what I have got everywhere out in front and to the right is literally flat like a bowling green. There isn't anything out there. The only thing I have found, three quarters of the way across to the island, there's a gradual depth change. There's a little plateau, it slightly raises and then drops off down behind. And we are talking very gradual. It goes from 12 to 13, down to 11, and then gradually goes back across to 12. So it's not much of a change, but it's done me a few bites already. And I'm pretty sure during the course of the week, the fish will keep visiting that area just down the back of the bar and it will certainly get me into a few more fish. Okay, 24 hours in, we've all had a few fish. Dave's doing really well down the end. Dan had a few fish last night. I got my rods out really into dark, and to be honest with you, I had a few bream last night, but I was so tired from the traveling and the last week, I didn't even put my rods back out once I'd had the fish. So today has been mega quiet in our swim. I think it's gonna be a night lake over this side, don't you, mate? Looks like it. We've seen a few fish out quite long. Uh, the way the next swim up, peg three, the VIP is, and a few fish down into Dave's Bay, but out here has been very quiet. What we have done today though, we've mapped out the swim extensively, trying to find some sort of feature out there, spreading rod across it, and basically we're gonna build a wall of bait, feed it quite heavy, quiet in the daytime, let them come in at night for a big feed, and hopefully we're gonna put a few fish on the bank. So I've just had my proper first take from the long rod on my right hand side. And, uh, fish has kited on a big long line down my left. It hasn't taken mine or Dan's rods out yet, which is a bit of a miracle. But if I get this one in, I think it'll be a bit of a miracle myself because it's basically just gone down this margin at about 100 yards. So I'm just praying that it wants to go back out into open water. Like a feel great on the trees and all the bushes. So we will see. I can feel with every pole grating through something. Eventually, that fish is going to meet that something and uh, hopefully kick out into open water. And the carp gods are on my side, but we'll soon find out. So, there you go, it's a proper one. I'd say probably 20 pound, very, very hard fighting common. Took me all down the left hand side, got me in the snags, but eventually got her out and uh, really happy with this one on the German rig a couple of uh, tiger nuts with little ends bitten off them just to release a little bit of flavour give a little bit of colour over the moon with this one this swim I think is going to be a night bite swim so it might be a long night we'll see how it goes Well, it's not the biggest of Hungarian fish, probably about 18, 19 pounds. Strange look to him with no pectoral fins. And it's my second fish. I had about a mid to upper 20 last night. And the thing is, you don't know what you're gonna hook. You don't know what's in here. It's quite exciting. When the alarm screams, it could be one of these little fellas or a 50 pounder. It's gonna keep going, but surely at some point we're gonna get a better fish.
Well, they are definitely getting bigger. Had a couple of doubles, and I was beginning to wonder if there were any big carp in this lake. And I've got a double take, and this was the first, and the other one's bigger. The 36 pound, or just a couple of ounces under actually, nearly pulled my arms off. They're really rucking these fish. Great big fins on them. Really angry carp. Check that out, a long lean fighting machine. Very, very angry Hungarian mirror. 44 pounds and eight ounces. Chuffed with this one, mega fight. All the fish in here are really long and streamlined and now pulling your arms off. You don't know if you've got a 20 pounder or a 40 pounder, but this one, 44 pound, eight ounces. And we're only one night in. Who knows what this week's gonna bring. So sometimes when you're getting liners, it's quite easy to pick up the rod and get a bit too excited. Especially when you're dropping out of a bait boat. I find the bait is so close together, the fish come in and they really do, you know, home in. They'll be knocking the lead about. So I literally do wait for it to, you know, like it did there, it dropped back or absolutely scream off. Because you don't want to be driving out 120 yards, wasting loads of battery and then hitting liners. You want to wait for that rod to actually go. Every carp you look in here fights its head off, so it's really hard to tell until you've got them at close quarters what you've got on. Some of the fish I've picked up the rod today and they've absolutely flat rodded me, pulling line off the clutch, and I've been convinced it's a big one. And when it's come up, it's been a 20 pound common. They're very wild fish. I don't think they've been caught a hell of a lot. So when you're hooking them, they're going absolutely mental. This one doesn't feel too bad at the moment. But as I said, sometimes it is hard to tell. Check her out, they're definitely getting bigger. 46 pounds and 12 ounces, lovely solid fish. Again, pulled my arms off. They're so strong in here, it's unbelievable. I just don't know what to expect next. They're getting bigger as the day goes on. The bay I'm fishing has definitely got quieter now, but I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Tactically, I have made some changes. I started off with the big hook baits, size two hooks, to try and avoid the smaller carp it became obvious that there was a lot of fish in the area and I just wasn't getting the bites. So I went back to my old faithful, the Ronnie rig, which I know is great for hooking fish. Got three rods out on the Ronnie rig and it was the right move. Straight away I started getting bites. I did have to plough through a few fish. Some of them were as small as sort of 10, 15 pound, but it's all paid off. I've got the bigger fish. I'm gonna stick with that for now. I'm baiting quite heavy, putting three or four kilo in a boat every time, and within minutes of dropping it, I'm getting liners, so they're getting straight on the bait. I'm just gonna run you through briefly the mix that I'm putting into the bait boat. I'm using boilies, and what I do, I load it all into one bucket. So, a few scoops of boilies, then a few scoops of trout pellet. These are covered in hemp oil as well, so they're really oily. The oil's coming up off the bottom, filling the water column, and it's stopping the fish in its tracks with a good food signal telling it there's food down there. Tiger nuts. The carpenter love tiger nuts. We was tipped off with that. So I've been putting a little helping of them in. Bit more trout pellet. Then I stir it all up. I'll make that up until it's about three quarters full and that's my mix ready to go so if I have a fish in the night I ain't got to be dipping into lots of different bags I've made the mix I can simply just fill the boat and get it back out there you can make up whatever mix you want generally I do like to crush my boilies and chop them but because we've seen a lot of small carp I wanted to keep the food items bigger plus there's a lot of bream in here so I want to keep the nuisance fish away so I've kept everything in its initial size
The scenery has now changed for myself and Jay. We've been sat behind motionless rods now during the daytime for two days and getting bites at night. We've come on a recce right up the other end of the lake and it's a secluded bay. We've got some people to our left, but the area out in front of us here, there's no lines and we're allowed to fish here for the daytime. So to maximise our chances, we've bought two rods each. We're going to have a bit of a laugh, a bit of a challenge between the two of us, bait company versus bait company, and just enjoy our time. We've seen more fish out here today in the last 10 minutes than we've seen over our rods for the whole day this morning. And you know what? I'm really confident. I know Jay is. He's up at the van. He's really excited to get started, and so am I. So we'll see what today brings. If this evaluates where we're getting into fish here in the day, we're going to go back to the main swims at night, put the rods out on the marked areas for the night time, and you'll more than likely see us up here every day, sleeping down there with the rods out, venturing up here in the day, just trying to maximise the opportunities. Where Dave is down there on the other end of the lake, he's got fish in there all day. It'd be silly for him to move. So he's staying down there. Myself and Jay, we're going to work as a team and try and do a right little job on this bay. Fish is just kiting round to my right. So I've just been reeling, keeping up with him. He's now realised he's moved a lot closer to me and not liking it. <laughs> I think it's a koi. It'd be lovely to get this in. You can see him. A bright orange <laughs> goldfish. Come on, give up you. What a lovely fish, look at that. 20th fish, and it's a real special one. What an absolute magic fish. Just think, in here somewhere, there's one about 45 pound. I'd love to catch that. It's unusual to get a few koi in lakes, so not being very common, I'm quite happy to catch this. Absolutely beautiful fish. Well, there you go, the result of a move into a really quiet bay. The swim me and Jay are in is motionless in the day. It made sense to come and make the move. This is the first one. We decided to rest the swim today, see what you can see up in this bay. Going to venture back to the swim tonight. But that one has made me really happy, really worth the move. 33 pound of stunning Hungarian carp. Well, it's a much cooler day today. Nice wind blowing into the bay where I'm fishing. Last night we all had a shower and then uh, went out to a pizza restaurant. Just needed a break from the lake really. If I hadn't showered, I think my clothes were gonna get off me. Didn't fish last night. We all decided not to fish, get a good night's sleep, get up this morning, and get back out hard. Got a fish showing in front of me, so I'm um, gonna give it a go. Little tactical change, gonna go on to a 20 miller and a 15 miller, big hook bait, size two hook, try and get away from them bream and the small carp, try and entice a big fish onto the hook. So hopefully we'll see how that goes. I'm on 24 fish now, had a couple of 40s and about 330s, there's a lot of small fish in here, a lot of 20s. So I'm going to try and get through to the bigger fish now. Fingers crossed, it's Wednesday morning. So last night we didn't put the rods out in our main swim. We actually uh, had a little bit of downtime and went to have something to eat and chilled out. But what that meant is that this morning we were nice and fresh. So I got up, come down this end and expected a few day bites and it hasn't disappointed. This one's been out about 20 minutes and uh, it's pulling back. 
sure it's not a monster because it's quite deep out here, it's about 12, 13 foot. So what they do, they just the fish are just sitting in the deeper water. It's a little scrap of common. And he's about to probably take Dan's rod out. This seems to be the stamp of the fish that are out in open water there. Um, for some reason, the shoulder smaller fish stay out there. Don't know if it's there, fed there or whatever, but so once again, when I look at this one, get it back. Fingers crossed for a big one. Jesus, that was now. Oh. Bye then. Dan's netting skills basically were a bit rubbish there. He put the net in the floor, let the fish swim out. <laughs> we did get to see the fish, but you can get to see the rig. So, I've actually switched it up. I'm just not a fan of the Ronnie rig. I just can't get on with it. I'm probably a bit too old to go, I don't know. But the multi rig does it for me all the time. Little pink pop up, size four choduck, and a semi stiff tungsten hook link on a prototype leg clip underneath these fingers that you can't see. During the Great Escape, I'm loving the German rigs and the slip days, and I've actually been using a prototype hook called the Medium Shank Curve, and so have the other boys in different shapes and patterns. We've got a few additions to the range coming in 2020, so keep an eye on social media because these are absolutely fantastic. They've caught us, as you've seen, some monster carp and some monster sturgeon, catfish, a variety of different things, but what hasn't failed at any point are these hooks. Super sharp, mega durable, and will fit in literally anyone's angling armoury. I've definitely got a bit of a dodgy stomach today. Must have been the breakfast this morning. What's the point in cleaning my toilet when them two are down there and I can go and use their toilets? <laughs> You're standing on my net. Yes. Finally, I've caught one of the mirrors out of here. Looks like a half decent one actually. So yeah, buzzing with this one. Cause it's taken a long time wading through many, many, many commons. Little baby commons. 50 pounds, six ounces. <laughs> well done mate, we have grafted. Yes! Get in. Yes! Yes. God, it's been a long time coming. I am absolutely buzzing with this one. Just over 50 pounds. This has absolutely made my week. Me and Danny Boy up in this bay have been wading through fish like you wouldn't believe. We've put in tons of bait. The DNA has smashed it now. And I am so, so happy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carp. Mwah. I've got a really nice mirror down there in the net. Probably a mid-30. Gave me a right old merry dance in this little back bay. And uh, the remaining second rod that was out there has also peeled off. Can't tell how big it is just yet. It's quite a way away. But all the fish in here really fight. These new hooks are ridiculously sharp. This is actually the third fish in less than an hour on this rod. I've checked the point, I'm putting the rod back out and it's still super sharp. No need to change it. And uh, the proof's in the pudding. That's free in less than an hour. If we get this one in. Oh, it's tiny.
And there we go. Another Hungarian mirror. It's not a monster. Run hook him in the net and have a look at the bigger one in the sling. Well, there you go. 34 pound of hard fighting Hungarian mirror carp. It's been a great day up in the bay. We've had loads of bites. And do you know what? Bit of a cliche. It's been the great escape from the swim down there because we've been sitting behind motionless rods and it in half paid off massively. When we came up into the bay, we was getting lots of takes from lots of small fish, 20s, low 30s, and now we seem to be getting a little bit of a run of some bigger fish. Long may it continue, but if it doesn't, I'm really pleased with this one. I get lots and lots of emails regarding sleep apnea. Uh, the office know that I've got it, so every email that comes through to the headquarters gets sent to me. I'll then relay the information back to you guys. Now, I've got sleep apnea and I go fishing quite a lot and I do a lot of nights on the bank. So for me, it really, really is important that I've got the power and the facility to actually use this machine because it's life and death situation. You know, you stop breathing in your sleep and you die. It's as simple as that. Um, so what I've got, I've got myself a 480 Gorilla case. I put the, I've got the S9 uh, ResMed machine and with a large power pack with a 12 volt adapter, this will last about three nights on auto. You could also run it with a 12 volt adapter. So if you haven't got the 12 volt di directly into the S9, you can get an inverter that goes into this and you can plug it directly into that. Again, last two or three nights with, when it's like that. If you've got facilities, so if you're in France, for instance, and you're away for a week, just make sure you charge this every two or three nights so that you know that you've got another two or three nights worth of peaceful sleep. Now, it's really, really important, guys. I mean, there's so many people say to me, I've given up fishing since I've got sleep apnea. You really don't need to, not nowadays. There's so many ways of doing it. Like I say, a 12 volt adapter, a power pack, and you're ready to go. <laughs> Dan? Yes, right, mate. Have a look at that photo I just found on the on the group. <laughs> that is a hundred in here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Dirty. <laughs> I'll tell you what, mate, he's a savage, isn't he? Do fire I... with fire. Huh? Exactly, fire with fire now. Hang about. He has been up here. Dirty Leave me! Another long lean fighting machine, 34 pound, and it's my 34th fish. It's midday Wednesday. You know what, I'm gonna try and go for the 50. Try and get the 50 fish and see what's in there. Just had news from the other end of the lake that Jay's bagged a lump, so that's excellent. Not only has Jay got a big one up the other end, Dan's got one in the hole, courtesy of Lev's. Well, I'm back in the main swim now. The rods are out for the evening and I'm back in the comfort of my own bivvy. And you know what? It feels great. We had a brilliant day up the top end with Jay. We both had some lovely fish and we had a hell of a lot of fish today. It's been pretty frantic. I'm catching up on the emails that I've missed today, replying to all the shops. And I'll just explain to you really how I get comfortable in my bivvy and my setup for keeping in touch with the stores at home using the power facilities. The main stable of all my power is the C-Smart power bank. I'm charging my MacBook here with the power delivery, C to C cable in the seaport, just keeping on top of emails, keeping in touch with what's going on back in the UK. And then in the, one of the USB ports, I've also got one of the new two meter cables. I've got loads of the one meter cables, but for me, the two meter is brilliant because as you can see, that bivvy light could be situated anywhere in this bivvy with the use of the two meter cable attached to the power pack. I can charge it on the go. I haven't got to take it off, trying to find the magnetic strip again. Really, really simple. And while that BV light's charging, I'm making use of the one of the multi-lights. That's sitting on the new multi-clamp. That is a super versatile clamp that can be attached in the most awkward of positions in the BV, whether you're out in a boat, 
not only can you put the multi-lot on it, you can put the action station, any of our adapters, and you know what, it's really genius. I can turn and manipulate and have this light in a magnitude of positions, wherever I like, I can have it facing on the laptop, I can have it on the bivy table, I can have it on me, I can have it outside, and if you want it as a lantern, flick through the colours, this clamp makes it all versatile, really easy to use, and as I say, this is my sort of power setup when I'm on the bank. You want to be comfortable in them long sessions. No point being cramped, having no lighting, having no power. For me, power is essential, and I think it should be a main stable in everybody's fishing. Getting up early on these trips can really pay off. Just on sunrise today, myself and Jay got up come and investigated the bay and it was apparent they was here in large numbers. There's fish showing everywhere. It made sense to reel the rods in as quick as we could, put the minimal gear in the van and get back up here to maximise our chances. Last night was quite quiet. I managed one 30 pounder, but relatively quiet across the whole lake last night. But it really is apparent just over my shoulder. There's a lot of fish out there, they're showing. There's a few big ones, there's a lot of small ones. But you know what? We've got a few hours, let's try and maximise our time and try and get a few in the landing net. Well, just had a total symmetrical take. Both rods went at the same time. I grab one, Paul grab the other, and he gets the bigger fish. What's that about? Fish number, <laughs> standard. Fish number 46, gonna keep going. They're getting bigger. Well, look at that. 33 pound of hard fighting Hungarian common carp. It's been a crazy morning up in the bay. Myself and Jay struggling to keep a rod in the water, but it's great sport, you know. We've been sitting behind motionless rods all day in the main swim. Coming up here for a few hours has paid off massively. We're coming to the end of the trip now. It's been a great trip. We've had loads of bites, all shapes and all different sizes. And it's really nice to come to this part of the world and experience the fishing. Here we go. Oh, it's a long one. Really? This says it all. All right, let me have a little read throw. <sighs> oh my God. Tongue and cheek, <laughs> masala. <laughs> oh no. Everyone loves a curry. It's an eating challenge with some interesting ingredients so it's all three of you individually. Each person will be served with their own curry. It's the quickest person to finish the challenge but with a twist. Once you've eaten all the contents in the curry, the challenge isn't over as it might get hot. You'll be provided with one glass of milk each. The first person to drink the milk is third place, second is second place, last is first place. Anyone drinks the milk first at any point comes last. No other drinks are available at all. No beer. Good luck, boys. <laughs> well, I'm absolutely... I'm going to lose because I can't be dealing with gristle fat and all that. Your fish, you're going to be hammered. I reckon you'll be all right, Joe. You're the only one who hasn't actually said what you don't like. Well, I don't like dick. <laughs> <laughs> who does? Oh, hold on, hold on. His grinder profile does not say <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> right. That looks nice. Got any rice with it? There's a lot of chilli in there. There's big cool. lumps there, look at that bit. Oh, <laughs> oh f That looks like saying, I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> that looks worse. That looks worse than mine. Oh, oh I just see a part of a <laughs> Jay. <laughs> I just see a part of a <laughs> Part of <laughs> It was like a long, it, was, it just looked like a willy, stir it. 
You've got the top end. Oh. <laughs> You've got the top oh, end. God. Sure oh, God. Oh, Oh, my God. Look at that bit of gristle there. That looks like he's got a nice curry. No, no, look, there's a bit. Did you see that go in? <laughs> that weren't sausage, Dan. Like a rib cage. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Oh, my God. No. That's really good. How chewy is it? No one, bro, eat that. <laughs> no way. No way. I'm out. Not the heat. There's no way I can eat that gristle. Oh. It's like bone. I can't do that. You've got to go for it all day. I'm nearly finished, mate. <laughs> oh, look. Look, look at that. Oh. <coughs> Stop it now. Yeah. All right. Ugh. Well, you can't throw it up, Dan. No, I'll spat it out because he's going to be sick near me. <laughs> I'm f***ing winning this. Come on, Dan. <laughs> Man, that is so hot. Come on, Dan. You've got to get a win. He's drunk the milk. He's drunk the milk. Daddy boy. I'm going to try and finish it for you. No, no, I sit down. You've won. You don't have to, mate. That was horrendous. <laughs> that was kind of. <laughs> so there's only uh, there's only one thing that I really, really cannot stomach, as you just see, and that is gristle. Pe penis. <laughs> that. Dan is obviously uh, not afraid of anything because he's just smashing it. Don't give it a good go. Uh, yeah, so mate. My lips are on fire. On to the next one. First choice. Second choice. <laughs> one one, Dan. Done, mate. <laughs> All week in the swims, we've been seeing silvers get smashed to pieces. Wondering what they are, whether it was cats, but the culprits are the Xander. I've just had one this morning on the Slip D rotator rig. Absolutely nailed, one toner. To my surprise, playing it in the mist and this culprit turned up. What a beautiful specimen. Well, I've left Jay in the main swim. I've come down to Dave's left after seeing a couple of fish, just with two rods. Both of them have gone with these two absolute stunners. Dave was on hand. He's just had a couple of fish as well. The common's probably just over 30 pounds. This really naughty mirror <laughs> who does not want to get filmed. It's probably about 25, 26, but it's a lovely brace. And uh, it's nice to come down, just have a little catch up with Dave, see what's been going on and he honestly can't keep a rod in the water. I look forward to going to all these different European venues, not because uh, like you go away, you want to catch a big and you want to have a PB, or you want to have a really good week with your mates and just enjoy yourself. What I've found here is the 20 pounders fight like fish that I've had 50, 60 pound in other venues. Long wild commons, some little deep bodied mirrors, but every one that that rod goes, you don't know what you're attached to. And it's a bit like, you get a nice adrenaline rush, a bit of a buzz about it. And then all of a sudden a little 22 pounder will pop up and it yeah. just shocks the life out I've of you. I've done it a few times. I thought, what? What's, what is the big one gone? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've talked Mr. Levy into a quick challenge. The 60 minute carp race. We've got the same rig, the same setup and we've got the same bait. All that's different is the angler and their angling ability. Yeah. Let's see who wins this. We're gonna to go to the restaurant and the loser is buying dinner and the beers. You know who's gonna win this, Dan. No! Yes! No! Yes! Yes! 
toast the pasta. We don't want to snatch at this one, David. <laughs> <laughs> looks quite a nice fish, to be honest. I'm going to net it for my old mate. And it looks like I'm going to be picking up the bill at dinner tonight. Oh! Got some colour. It's a nice one. Oh, it's a big 30. It's a nice one. Yay! <laughs> it's dinner time. That's a nice fish. Yeah, well done. Well done, mate. The rod race winner was Dave. Really nice fish. And yep, I'm going to be picking up the cheque tonight. <laughs> and uh, we're going to eat well. Unfortunately, there's been a bit of a wild card thrown in that it sounds like it's now for all the crew, the gaffer, and Dave. So. Uh, Expensive old meal, thank you. <laughs> Give a kiss, man. <laughs> really nice ending to a great day's fishing. Well done, mate. Go on, boy. Well, that's another great week coming to an end. We've got the final bits to put back in the vans before we make the 1100 mile journey home. It's been a fantastic week. Going from Croatia to Hungary, I really didn't think we'd succeed in having more fish than we had in Croatia, but it's been absolutely restless. Yeah, it's been an absolute crazy week, isn't it? Stupid. From the minute you get up to the minute you go to sleep, it takes, and some of the nights we've had to actually reel in and just go, you know what, I'm not fishing this tonight. Um, I've enjoyed every minute of it, to be honest with you. I really, really like it, apart from the challenge. Did not enjoy that <laughs> at all. But uh, yeah, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah. I, I mean, anything you'd do different or? Nothing. I was thinking we'll get 30 fish here this week. I think we lost count on 100. Yeah. We've had doubles, 20s, 30s, 40s, a 50. Chucked yeah. in, yeah. Yeah, it's been non-stop, hectic action. Yeah. Can't keep three rods on the rest, but a laugh as well. It's yeah, been it's a been a good, good crack. crack. It's a, it's a good place if you come in here with a group of lads, um, go onto the website, carpdreamlakes.com, and then you'll be able to go on there, book the swims you want. There's big areas where you can get three or four, five people on the points. There's a load of single swims. So yeah, if you come in here with a group of you, I think if you fish effectively, you'll catch loads of carp. We've got 1,100 miles, lads. Should we get on with it? Yeah, let's find home. Come on. <sighs> come on. Yeah, I found um, my wash bag. Yeah, where was it? Right next to the bag of that you left behind my bivvy. I left behind the bivvy. <laughs> yes. I wish someone had found my bivvy, bag. Yeah. I wish someone had found my wash bag. Bag of The only thing about that that's got anything to do with me is the content. Right, okay. <laughs> so who loaded Let's it? Let's check the handy cam footage later on. Yeah. I ain't got one. So I you didn't do it. Look look me in the eye, Dan. So I did not put that bag of there. I certainly put that bag of <laughs> 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 Good practice, Dave. Can we do yep. it without the hat? F***ing hell, you are frying the out of me. Been <laughs> caught twice in 12 hours. Oh. oh, Jay. He's doing that with my window open right there. I'll punch you in a minute. 